everybody and welcome back to OPC Kids Ministry. We are spending the next few months answering the question, who is God? And today we're going to learn that God is our friend. But before we do that, let's take a look at our memory verse for this series. You can find it in Romans 8, 39. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you guys have any favorite songs? I do. I love anything from Billy Joel, okay? I know you have no idea who he is. Check him out on YouTube. There's a ton of stuff. Guarantee you're going to like him too. But two of my favorite songs are Vienna and Piano Man. Piano Man's classic, okay? I also love um, a new song from Alan Doyle. Remember Alan Doyle? I was talking about him last week. Well, he's got a new song called Anywhere You Want to Go. Really good song. Just a fun song. And there's also a few from Ren Collective. Um, they're a Christian band, and I love the song Whatever Comes, and I Will Be Undignified. That's another fun song as well. So what are your favorite songs? Now, before you shout them out to me, write them down, email it to me, and tell me why you love them. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Sonia, what's all this talk about favorite music? Well, our Bible story today is actually a song. We don't know the tune, so we'll just read the words, but it's a song written by a guy named David, and he showed us how God is our friend. A David song is part of the Bible, God's special book, and we can find out so many true things about our friend God when we read the Bible. So let's check it out, but first, let's talk with God now. Let's pray. Dear God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, May our hearts and minds be focused on you alone in these moments so that we may hear the word that you intend for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're learning that God is our friend. So let's hear from a couple of girls who know that really well. Check your emails for a link to the video called Renee and Alina's Story. And pay attention. You're going to see how when we're friends with God, we can learn to be better friends just like he is. Now, for this lesson, you're going to need to get some extra clothes, a pencil, and a paper, okay? Now, as a family, what I want you guys to do is arrange the outfits on the floor. I'm going to try to put mine on the wall in the shape of a person. And you're also going to need to make two people, not just one, two. So you can pause it here and get your clothing to make your people. As, um, as you guys are getting your stuff, I'm going to put my clothing on, okay? So hold, actually, pause here. All right, I'm gonna get, let's start with the shirt. I've got a pretty shirt here. Oh boy, gotta close those in. We'll put her hand up like she's saying hello. I don't know why I called her a she, but I got it there. And then we're gonna get some pants on this little person. There we go. I'll let you in on my secret. These aren't my clothes. Nope, I forgot to bring some. And I looked around the church and voila. If you ask, you will receive, right? All right, so let's get our shirt on here. Look at this shirt. Wow. We'll put this shirt over here. This is a fancy schmancy shirt, we call that. Well, it's going to have to cover our who is God. And then look at these little trash pants. Ah, they're so baby clothes and kids' clothes are so cute. We kind of miss them after a while. Okay. So here we got our people. Okay, now these clothes people are gonna represent good friends. So let's fill them up with some of the good qualities that we have. Let's see. All right, um, what are some of the good qualities? Well, you look for a friend that's trustworthy, right? So I'm gonna put trust down. Whoops, I forgot to get my tape here. Then there's, what else is there that you can ask for a friend? 
Um, they're kind. Kindness is always a great, a great thing for friends. Okay, so let's put that on our first friend person. Um, what else? Show me out. Come on, shut it out. They are, well, they're fun. Fun friends are always cool to have. Okay, so fun friends. There we go. How about friends that will be there for you? So what do you call those kind of friends? Supportive friends, right? Supportive. Okay, anybody else have some more ideas? Let's, uh, what else we got here? Supportive friends? Okay, can't hear you. Gotta shout it out a little more. Friends who show you the right way of doing things, right? Because sometimes the right way, not always the most popular way. Okay, I think we have enough. All right. Okay, so as I read the following sections of Psalm 25, I want you guys to find what qualities of friend in that song. Okay, and here's as you find qualities, you can move some of the qualities you have from the first person to the second person. This person we're going to say represents God. Okay. Now, if you haven't thought of that quality, write it down. I won't be writing it down, but you guys can put it there. Okay. Psalm 25 verses one to three. O oh Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced, but disgrace comes from those who try to deceive others. So what quality in a friend do you see in verses 1 to 3? You know, think about it. It says, I put my trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced, right? Right, friends are trustworthy. And I think we wrote that one down. So we're going to take that one here. We're going to put it there. All right, good job. Now let's read verses 4 and 5. Show me the path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my hope in you. All right, what about this one? Okay, there's the word, there's a path. Um, follow, teach me, hope. A friend gives good advice. Now, do we have that one up here? Supportive, the right way. We can say they, gave, they put us in the right way. Now, you know what? Let's write it down. We're going to say good advice. All right, good advice. Okay, verse 6. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and unfailing love. All right, where do we get that one? A friend loves you. I can't even believe we forgot to put that on our first person. Okay, love. A friend loves you. All right, I'm going to read the second one as we go here, okay? Do not remember the rebellious sins of my youth. Remember me in the light of your unfailing love, for you are merciful, O Lord. Okay, what does that say? A friend forgives you, that's right. So do we have a friend forgives us? No, so let's get that one on. Forgiveness. See, it's good to go through these because then we actually see stuff that we miss that we know we would love that in a friend, right? There we go. Okay, verses 8 and 10. The Lord is good and does what is right. He shows the proper path to those who go astray. He leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his way. The Lord leads with unfailing love and faithfulness all who keep his covenant and obey his demands. All right. What does that say? A friend helps you make the right choices, right? We kind of said that. We said the right way, so there we go. Okay, what else do we have here? All right, this one is a big one. It's from verses 15 to 22. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues me from the traps of my enemies. Turn to me and have mercy, for I am alone and in deep distress. My problems go from bad to worse. Will save me from them all. Feel my pain and see my trouble. Forgive all my sins. How many enemies I have and how viciously they hate me. Protect me 
Rescue my life from them. Do not let me be disgraced, for in you I take refuge. May integrity and honesty protect me, for I put my hope in you. O God, ransom Israel from all its troubles. So what does this say? A friend helps you when you're in trouble. Do we have that there? You know what? A friend is supportive. Okay, there we go. So you know what? I'm going to move fun over. I like having fun friends. And kindness is always good. Okay, so you see, not only do our friends have these qualities, but the Bible tells us that God has the same qualities. And God is our friend, and he's better than any human friend we could ever have. He'll never stop loving us, and he's always with us all the time. So sometimes when your human friends aren't available when you need them, or maybe right now, okay, maybe you can't hang out with your friends right now because of COVID. Well, God is always there for you, and you can hang out with him anytime. We're learning today that God is our friend. And maybe you don't always feel like people want to be your friend, okay? I have those days too, okay? Maybe there are qualities in other people that make you not want to be your friend, okay? So let's list some qualities that might make people feel like no one wants to be their friend, okay? The ones that you put mentally in your head, right? Because it's not something that you have, but inside your head, you play these little games, right? Okay, for example, somebody thinks I'm weird, okay? So we're weird. Well, they must not want to be my friend, all right? So what do you think? Shut it out, can't hear you. Okay, they think that we're dull or boring. Okay, what's the other one? Oh, they don't like the way we look, okay? They don't like my curly hair, is that what you're telling me? All right. Well, they don't like the fact that we're not good in sports or music. They just don't like us? All right. Um, what's that one? Ooh. They think we're stupid? Ouch. That one stings a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to end that one right there. Okay, it's great. You guys gave a lot of answers that kind of stick in our head. Now, God is our friend. Well, we just came up with all these reasons that people not want, might not want to be our friend. Now, God is perfect. He's holy and he's amazing. So why does God want to be our friend? Let's dig into that. Okay, let's see what the Bible has to say about how God views us. Okay, you find this one in Psalm 139. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. So what do these verses tell you about yourself? Okay. God made you wonderful and marvelous. Okay, so anything you got in your head that kind of seems like, okay, somebody might not like us because of the way we look, right? Get that out, right? Just bing, kick it out of your head. All right, Genesis 1.27 tells us that God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Okay, God made you in his own image. So anything on our list that has to do with how we're made or the abilities that we might not have, right? Maybe we're not good at sports. Maybe we don't do music, okay? Personality traits, just kick them out of your head again. All right. Let's read Zephaniah 3, 17. For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful song. So how does it feel to hear that God takes delight over you? Okay, now listen. God just doesn't delight in you. He rejoices over you too. So anything in our head that has to do with not feeling likable or lovable, kick it out. Good job. 1 John 4.16 tells us that God is love. God will always choose love. So if anything is left in that mental list in your head, kick it out now. There you go. All right. Sometimes you may feel like the things that are stuck in your head about people not wanting us, wanting to be our friends, right? Those aren't good. But God made you just the way he wanted you, in his image, and he rejoices over you. 
He'll always choose to love you. God is our friend, and nothing we can do can change that. Listen to these next verses and think of it as a blessing over you. Romans 8, 38 to 39, we read, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing that we stick in our heads can get in the way of God wanting to be our friend. Now earlier we filled a friend shape, right? We had those friends on the wall with all kinds of qualities of God. So let's thank him for being our friend now. Okay, let's wrap this up in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, you are our friend, and we want to be good friends to you. Thank you for loving us, for giving us, and for being trustworthy. Thank you for giving us good advice and helping us make wise choices and for helping us when we are in trouble. But most of all, thank you for being our friend. Help us show how much we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the children say, Amen. All right, thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. Until next time, if somebody asks you who is God, tell them God is your friend. Ciao. We're discovering a brand new world as we dig a little deeper.